Mike, uh, you know, I see. I know you said you were open to, to the fight that you got. Now that it's all official, I mean, how, how does it feel to, to have this opportunity in front of you? Uh, it would be anticlimactic in other people's eyes. Um, honestly, it's not something on my checklist. Um, I don't think uh, it's it's my job to say, you know, I want the title. I want to be the youngest champion. I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, I feel like doing that just puts stuff in my head that doesn't need to be there. I feel like my job and what is right in front of me is just fighting and I feel like that's what I'm supposed to do and, and what I'm supposed to stick at and I don't think I'm supposed to get involved with the media and what they think and all that kind of crap like that or who I'm fighting. So you don't think about I mean, the fact that it would be very historic and very special, you, you try to put all that aside? Is, is that kind of what you don't want to think about that at all? I mean, it's pretty special. It, it, exactly. I don't, I don't want to think about it until afterwards and that's kind of how, how, I, how, how I do it. Um, this whole fighting thing is very stressful. It, it's uh, very overwhelming, you know, the whole first fight jitters kind of thing, you know. Um, you can't think about it. Yeah, I, you, have, you have to be a good judge of when to, to block your emotions and when to let them in, and emotions cloud judgment. And I don't want anything clouding my judgment when I go in there. I don't want to think about a title. I don't even want to see a title. I don't want to think about it. I just want to go in there. I just want to go home. I want to train, be with my family, you know, just do what makes me happy do my job and go back home. With that said, did you envision this happening to you so fast? I mean, obviously you're such a young guy and this is all happening so quickly, but I know you have goals and that sort of thing. Did you ever envision that you could be in a title fight this soon in your career? Um, there's a fine line between knowing where you are and where you could be. And a lot of people, fighters, they, they know they could be here. And I, I did too. I knew that I could be here, but it's a difference between where, you're, where you are and where you could be. Um, and where I am right now, I, I just I just try to look at it only on the martial arts standpoint. I, I really don't want to look at um, the possibilities of where I can be on the media's eyes. I feel like it corrupts people. When they take the media standpoint, the media blows people up. They're, they're heroes, they're uh, idols, they're in, in, indestructible, all these kind of things. You know, it's like Anderson Silva hit somebody and they think, oh crap, I get hit by Anderson Silva, I'm gonna fall down now. You know, I'm not putting anything against his martial arts, he's a great martial artist. But there's also a, a vibe, you know, a, about these people that get built up by the media. And when you believe that image about yourself, bad things happen. So I prefer not, I don't, I don't, I really don't pay much attention to the sport and the media and what goes on in other people's lives. I just stick to myself and go home and do what I love. So where do you think you are as a martial artist with that in mind? I mean, where do you feel like you are? It's hard to say. Um, where I think I am, um, I, I can only judge it by my competition. And um, the way I see it is, if you're a doctor and you want to repair something, you have to understand it. And once you understand it, once you understand the body, you can build it, you can break it down, or you can repair it. And I feel like to do that, to, to expand on something, to destroy it or repair it or anything like that, you need to understand it. And when I understand my opponents, that's when I feel like I'm ready and I'm at that level. Because I've always, my whole life, since I was 14 years old, saw these people and said, I can be there, just like everybody sees and say, I can be there, but you're not. I, I, I gauge that um, by, do I understand them? And I feel like right now, I understand everyone around me. And by that, I feel like that gives me an edge on breaking them down, building myself up. I feel like I have a good understanding of martial arts right now. Being from Modesto, and I believe you're training with Oakdale, is that right? Are you still training there, or do you plan to bring uh, a different kind of training mode in for Hanumbra? Never. Um, I feel like people need to cross train and need to go to other places when their gym is stagnant. And when a gym is set forth and say this is our level, we're not learning, and this is what we know and this is what we're sticking to. And once they do that, a fighter goes there, they get their bar filled up in that gym, there's nothing else they can learn, they go on to the next one and soak up all the information there. And I don't feel like I ever need to do that because our whole gym progresses. Everyone in our gym is all about martial arts, not about athletics. A body can be pushed to a limit, but a mind can't. A mind keeps going forever. And our gym, everybody is into building their minds, becoming a better, better martial artist. I've got a big list and just keep popping things off and I have a lot of things to learn. Um, and, and I feel like I could go anywhere in the world and train and there's nowhere in the world I'd rather go than the place I'm at. You have quite a lot of finishes on your record. Do you plan to basically come in with that same mentality? And thus far, how have you gotten to that level where you are able to finish all these opponents the way that you have? I do it by an understanding of my body. Um, I'm not very big, I'm not very strong, I'm not even very fast, but I understand the body. I understand martial arts and I understand body mechanics. 
and that's how I, I, I do it. Anyone can do what I do. It's not me or something that I was born with. It's the way that I do it. It's kind of like the dog whisperer if you ever watched him. He, he, he's, it it's not about him. It it's about the way he does it. And people say power is something you're born with. That's false. It can be taught. Your mind can be taught. A mindset can be molded. And that's kind of the philosophy that I go about and I feel like translates to my fighting that produces success is learning efficiency in my body you know not being here being here not being here being here it's a game of inches and I feel like I have a good understanding of that to make my small body produce the maximum amount of, of uh, efficiency that I can get. That being said Hanan Baral is obviously one of the more dangerous guys in your division and he's very technical with his striking and everything that he sets up even with submissions how are you preparing for him? I feel like if I were going to match myself up against him with his strengths, I will lose. But if I match myself with him with my strengths, I feel like I have a good chance. Um, I feel like he's a better athlete than me. I feel like he has better cardio. He's faster than me. He does all these you know, flying knees and spinning back kicks and all that kind of stuff like that. Um, he's a world champion in jiu-jitsu from what I hear. Um, I could be wrong. I don't even know. But anyways... I can't match myself with what he does, but I, I kind of see it as the whole David Goliath thing. Um, not saying that he's a giant or I'm a boy or anything like that. He has his weapons and I have mine. And David brought a sling to a, um, a battle with, a, with a, a warrior, you know, a warrior who's been doing it his whole life. And that was his weapon and he was good at it. And I feel like it's the same thing. And my weapons are my basics and my defense. And, and my fight with Miguel Torres, I think I get hit, hit four times and that's the most I've ever been hit in a fight. And I consider defense more than anything a priority. I can't win if I'm unconscious. And if I get it over with fast, I go home getting punched less. So everything I do is defensive and basic. When you say understanding your body, a lot of people or a lot of the fighters say that that avoids injuries. And we've seen a lot of injuries this year. How do you avoid injuries when you're getting ready, when you're training? I think it's by knowing my team and I think that's another mistake of people going and cross training is you don't know them like brothers. Um, there's, there's always a sense of pride and people do try to beat you up. They, oh, this is, uh, you know, this guy is a champion. He's going for this. He has this, this status. I want to beat him up. You know, um, I feel like I avoid that for the most part by being in a place where the, the, these are the people only, uh, get tongue tied. These are the only people that I've ever trained with and these people know me just as good as I know myself. They, there's, there's no pride, there's no uh, you know, malice or, or ill competition, it's just us trying to build ourselves as martial artists. And I think when we have that respect for each other, we have that knowledge of each other, I feel like we avoid a lot of injuries because it's not using our strength and trying to kill each other, we're literally just having a chess match and building ourselves as martial artists. Now that fighters and MMA is building up, do you think we're pushing it too much and that's one of the reasons that injuries are happening so often and you know now that the first UFC got canceled and all of that, do you, do you think that might be one of the reasons? No. Um, that, that's a business aspect of it, you know, um, how big the fighters are getting, uh, the fights and what's going on with the UFC, that, that's business and it has nothing to do with training. I think it's very important for fighters to stay separate from the management aspect, from the media and from everything that's going on, it, it, it clouds judgment. You know, it's like when you're afraid, when you have pressure on you, you get afraid and you get, and you get, uh, you get angry to counter that so you feel strong. And then with that, you, you're slow, you're sloppy, you get injuries. Bad things happen when you look at places you're not supposed to be doing. You know, I think it's important for fighters not to look at what the UFC is doing, not look at what their manager's doing, leave that in his jurisdiction, do your own business stick to what I do and when I stick to what I do I don't have to worry about that that doesn't cloud my judgment it doesn't it doesn't screw me up so I think more than anything that could be a problem is fighters not not being at peace with the situation and looking in places that they're not doing they're not supposed to be doing any special projects going on in the wood shop right now or <laughs> uh, just finished Christmas presents um, a, a couple a couple of them um, I, got, I had a big old frame for, for my girlfriend, picture frames and stuff like that that I put together with splines and all this kind of stuff like that. It was cool. And then um, actually uh, a referee, Jason McCoy, I'm actually building a, uh, a little treasure chest for him. That's, uh, that's one of the next ones, but I'm, j I'm trying to find balance between doing as a hobby and, you know, fighting and having deadlines in the shop and stuff. So it, it's, it's going uh, slowly but surely. You still doing the cutting boards? Those are those are like your specialty, right? Yeah, th those more than anything are what people you know ask for. It's uh, 
the cutting boards that I, that I do make are very, I, I do them a very specific way for a very sp specific reason. And it's it's kind of cool. You wouldn't be able to go anywhere and, you know, go to the store and buy one. They're made in a very specific way. I turn the wood in a specific way. You take care of it a certain way and it lasts you a lifetime. And I got my signature branded into it too. Nice. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Michael. It was a pleasure, man. Good to see you.